Now we'll look closely at the grammar of events run to the client, that is to say, on the device, as well as what can be done with them and how. First, we'll review the invocations that can be made within a client event. Next, we will see the other commands, keeping in mind what we've already said, that the grammar of these events is smaller compared to that of the events run on the server, which were start, refresh, and load. As for invocations, later on we will return to study call options, which allow indicating some aspects of the invocation to be executed. Invocations can be classified as server REST services, data providers or procedures, the return data that we will load in a variable on the device. Note that they must be exposed as REST services and that we can't call an internal procedure from the device if we're using an application with an online architecture. At the end of the course, we will talk about the offline case. Also, from a client side event, we may want to add a new record to the database without prompting the user for information. This is done as in any other GeneXus object using the methods and properties of the business component. The difference here is that it will also have to be exposed as a REST service because we're calling from the device in an online architecture. From a client side event, we can also call the work with details screen to perform insert, update, or delete operations. Internally, this will be translated into an invocation to the REST business component. Here, through this screen, the user is prompted for information. Next, this operation is performed in a transparent way for the developer. We may also just want to call the list or the detail in view mode, as well as panels for smart devices objects, which are a bit more flexible than work with screens. In addition, we can also call a dashboard. Or we can use some of the features provided by APIs, such as displaying a message on the screen, asking the user for confirmation to continue, returning to the indicated object or to the app's main object, adding a contact to the contact book of the device, and so on. A web panel can also be invoked. It'll be opened in the device browser, keeping the application and status bar of our app, as long as the browser is Chrome for Android and Safari for iOS. Otherwise, it'll be opened in the default browser with the borders removed to make it look more similar to the rest of the application. That's all about invocations for now. As for commands, the accepted ones are shown here. For example, a control can be shown or hidden, its class can be configured, and the control structures if, do case, and do while can be used. For now, four in structures are not included, nor the methods, such as add, of SDTs or business components. These structures accept Boolean expressions, which may include everything we know except for invocations. UDPs or external objects methods are not accepted. Invocations to subroutines can also be used, do sub, except in the dashboard object. In the command for each selected line, only a proc can be invoked. It's invoked once when it's online. On the server, it's invoked n times, once for each selected line and the result is returned in JSON format. In assignments, a simple variable can be assigned an expression or an invocation to a proc that returns the value, but an SDT element or business component can only be assigned a value and not an expression. In addition, we have the return and refresh commands. As for the composite command, let's remember what we've already seen in other videos. When several invocations have to be included in one event, the entire code of the event must be grouped within this command. In this way, if an error occurs in the call sequence, it stops running, and errors are automatically handled and displayed on the screen without any programming. This command is only implemented in smart devices where it's mandatory. We will see an example where we will code a client event that will require this command. Suppose that we want to allow adding new speakers to the list of speakers of a conference by inserting them into the database and then associating them with this conference. 
Here we see the event associated with the add button. We've rounded its commands with the composite and composite block. Why? Because there is more than one command within the event. We may even add many more commands within that same event. Note what we've programmed in this composite and composite block. First, we invoke the speaker's detail in insert mode, sending it as parameter a business component variable of speaker type, so that it returns the speaker's details that the user has just inserted in the detail when returning from the invocation. Next, we call a procedure. By sending it the session ID in which we're positioned and the speaker ID that has just been entered, it will add that speaker to that session in the table corresponding to the session speakers level. The procedure's output parameter will be a variable of messages predefined SDT data type, which is automatically returned by every business component when its get messages method is used. Within the procedure, we will load it with the error or warning messages that we want. In this way, this variable is automatically inspected when it returns. If there are warnings, the corresponding messages are displayed and the program continues running. If an error occurs, the message is also displayed, but the program stops running. The code that comes next is not executed. This procedure will have to be exposed as a REST service. Why? If no errors occurred, the following command is executed. It's the confirm method of the interop API. Remember that, in this case, writing interop confirm is not necessary. It shows the user the specified message between brackets and offers to continue running the following element by clicking on OK, or stopping there by clicking on Cancel. If you click on OK, the following invocation is performed and the contact is added to the address book of the device. Once again, if this operation is successful, it continues to the next statement where, in this example, we leave the speaker name of the speaker business component empty, and then we try to save. This will throw an error because if we open the speaker's transaction, we see that the error rule was programmed to not leave the speaker's name empty. Therefore, we will see how the error message corresponding to the rule is displayed. In this case, the success message will not be displayed because the execution was interrupted here, in the save operation. If this error rule didn't exist, the save operation would be successfully performed and the success message would be displayed. In sum, we can see that there's a great difference with web applications, because in this type of application, when a called object caused an error within an event, the execution didn't stop, it continued to the following statement, and the developer had to handle the errors and program the actions to take in that case. On the other hand, the composite command is the one that stops the execution when an error occurs in a call sequence and causes the errors to be automatically handled, displaying them on the screen without programming anything. Now let's talk about the last topic related to events, which is the order and the moment in which they're executed.